Okay, so to, um, now we're going to continue with quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals, and that's a hard one to say. It's on page 925 in your book. And I want you guys to really focus on something. Just like we know triangles means tri means three, and angles, three angles. That's what makes a triangle, a shape that has three angles only. A quadrilateral means quadri quadri means four, and lateral means sides. So a quadrilateral is any shape that has four sides. Okay, and we have um, some shapes that we are they're the most common. But really, any sh any polygon or any closed shape with four sides is considered a quadrilateral. Okay, the most common ones that we have are these. So we have uh, a parallelogram. It kind of looks like a rectangle, except that the sides are more like on a slanted on an angle. And then we have a rectangle, and we call it a rectangle because in Latin, rect means uh, right. So that means that a rectangle has four right angles. A rhombus, their sides are all the same size, so they're congruent, but their angles are not. And then we have a square, all right? And a square, just like the rectangle, has right angles in all four corners. And then there's this other one that's called a trapezoid. So a trapezoid um, is a little bit different, even though it's still a, qu a quadrilateral. It has one, two, three, four sides, so it's still a quadrilateral. And there could be yet one more shape, and I'm just going to draw it like that. So something like this, it's not a trapezoid. It kind of looks like one, but it's not because none of its um, sides are parallel. But um, it's still a quadrilateral, and that's um, usually called a trapezium. But anyway, so based on what we know, this is how we classify quadrilaterals. So um, a parallelogram, you know, has opposite sides. And opposite sides means, so if I'm looking at this side, its opposite is the one that's on the other side, right? So from this side and this, these two are opposite and they're parallel. If I continue these lines all the way, they will never meet and they will keep the same distance. And then this side and this side are opposite and they're also parallel. So look, if I even take this and keep it on that same angle and move it, that's going to be a parallelogram, okay? So that's what means that they're parallel. So it has two pairs. This is one pair, two pairs of opposite sides that are um, parallel. And also, the angles also have the same size. So for example, this angle and this one, that's the opposite. They measure the same. And this one and this one measure the same. Now, with a rectangle, we have has opposite sides that are parallel. So this and this is parallel. And this and this are parallel. Okay? And, but it also has four angles that are right angles. Okay? That's what makes a rectangle. A rhombus has opposite sides, so this side and this side are opposite and they're parallel. And then this side and this side, they're opposite and they're parallel. And also their angles, kind of like the parallelogram since it's kind of slanted. So this angle and this angle measures the same. And this one and this one measure the same. And we could go ahead and measure them if you want to, but um, and you can do that in your books later on if you want to. And now we have a square. The square is similar to the rectangle. It has opposite sides that are parallel, and it has four right angles. So I don't know if you guys see the uh, kind of like the pattern that these two have slanted sides, therefore their angles are not right, and this one that has all like really straight sides, these two, they have right angles. And then there's the trapezoid. And the trapezoid, um, the fact that um, it also makes it different is that it only has one pair of parallel lines. So only this and this line are parallel, but these two are not. If I were to extend, remember lines can extend indefinitely. So if I were to extend this line all the way here, and then this one, look, they become intersecting lines. They are not parallel. So um, 
a trapezoid only has one pair of parallel lines and these other ones have two pairs of parallel lines. In your books on page 927, you need to just lay, look at the figures and label them according to what they are. And if you need help again, just watch this video again and it will help you. On Seesaw, you're only going to be posting pictures of page 921 and 927. However, you do need to do um, your work in your books. Okay? Thanks.